cost of the filter becomes too high for the latency of this. So we either need to develop a super low latency but precise thing where like we know exactly the 14 bytes or maybe like 14 to 20 bytes we want to check and we do one really quick check with low latency and then we get back to our filter or we need to improve the filter. Right? So... We know we can filter pretty fast. Can I filter the whole thing quickly, though? Um... I don't think so. I think I do have to exit early. Yeah, so I have like a 2x without exiting early. Which to me makes sense. Basically, if I if I run to completion, I'm 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 faster, so I can run my filter on the whole thing, which means I could technically like condense information and help assist in a sparse search. But I think I would rather get more data, and what could I do to get that data? Like, what... How hard would it be for me to shift in data? I don't think it would be too hard. I have to get the next chunk, but that's okay. So let's do... For chunk ID in in zero dot dot in dot len, we'll do this. Uh, and then we'll do a chunk is equal to in chunk id let next chunk is equal to imp get chunk id plus one unwrap or mm512 set one epi doesn't matter let's just do 32 because 32 is traditionally the most optimized so get the current and next 64 byte chunk, right? So that's going to conditionally get that. Now, I don't know how expensive that conditional op is. Uh, actually, probably not too bad, depending on how this gets unrolled. Um, uh, dot get uh, copied. Uh, 2.05, let's see how much that has hurt us, because now we have an extra bounce check. Uh, looks like it's below the noise floor for mattering. Maybe even sped us up? Because we got rid of an iterator? Yeah, it's now, it's actually faster. Some things that were, okay, well. What if I don't do next chunk? What if I just change chunk indexing to this? Now it's slower again. Okay, so fetching the next chunk, uh, I guess helps. Cool. The fuck? All right. Um. So if I then keep the chunk as is, and then I want to rotate in next stuff and I'll do that by doing uh I'll or these together um cur next shift
And then we'll do a this, where this is shift. This is the current. And then we're going to shift in from above. Um, MM512 Ori Epi64. Is this correct? Is this how you do? Is this how you do computers? Uh, this is going to be next. So... Uh, mm, I have to mask this. Right? Shift right logical. And then I'm going to copy in bits from above. Some shit like that. Uh, how does this work? Or, uh, the bottom part is good, and then I need to get shift from the one above. And I think I just generate a mask then. Will that be fastest? Hmm. It might be fastest to just uh, shift it twice. So we're going to shift left, 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 left logical. Uh, 512. Oops. 64 by shift, correct? And then we're going to do mm512 shift right logical in, uh, index immediate, I think. Of shift. Shift right, uh, and then what do I do? Shift left, 64 minus that. So that would go up 56, and then we need to come down. Oh, we just need to come down the same amount. No. Oh, do we just stay there? Yeah. That's just it. I'm being dumb. Yeah, we just keep it up there. We want to leave it in those top bits. Right? That's how computers work. Is that how computers work? I think so. And what did we have before here? This chunk. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So now we're going to gather some statistics. Uh, 226. The stats we want to gain are, let me, skips is equal to zero. We're going to blast through the whole thing. Skips is this over this. Skips, and then we have uh, imp.len. So this is going to tell us how many chunks we skipped with the old algorithm. That's just a lie. Probably should increment skips. That'd be cool. That would be a good idea, right? Maybe we increment the number of skips. That would be smart. Yep, we're skipping like halfway through a lot of these. 
but we want to up that ratio. Forty-one sixty-four. Okay, so let's try our new logic, which we haven't figured out how to fucking do yet. Um, so this is the old logic. Shift in. If we're shifting data in, then does it matter if we have the gap? Do we have the same issue as we had before? Do we still need to do the mask thingy? I don't think so. Chunk, next chunk, and uh, eight. Probably just or. Very few skips. Do we need that mask thing anymore? Oh, God. Eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, forty, forty-eight, fifty-six. Shift left logical. Chunk, sixty-four minus shift. So that's going to go up fifty-six. Everything is going to be zeroed. Bottom, or that shit together. <laughs> Poop it out. We're going to compare it against our chunk. All the way through to 7. R7, so this will shift R's by 56 and shift this by 8. And that, I think, is correct logic. And then, I don't know... Oh, skips is this. It's the opposite. We improved it. Yeah, no shit. Now we're skipping a fuck ton more. Okay. I don't think we have this issue anymore. Uh, I think we do, then, actually. Because we can still skip this, right? This is still a skip-type situation. Let's just get the logic working before we fucking force it. So, we want skips to go up, and yeah, I mean, skips, compared to the old logic, skips has gone up a fuck ton. Before it was like 24, I think. We go back to this logic. Uh, this should be the original algorithm. Yep. Look at the skip counts. 20, 20, 20, 23, 29, 20, 23. So when we go to this, we've dramatically increased the number of skips, which makes sense because we've increased the window size that we search with the same number of operations. So we've dramatically increased the size that we're searching while doing the same number of operations which is amazing.
Um. So, is this bad logic now? We're shifting in everything. We're getting a mask. That's basically telling us if in the next eight there's a match. And now it's doing that unconditionally. For every single bit, it's telling us if, if up to eight bytes in the future, there is a match. Right? Are you also shifting the next seven? In the next seven in the extra spaces, what do you mean? Oh, like chaining them? Nah. Like this next chunk, I'm, I'm, it's temporary. I'm not like actually running a sliding window. So for each chunk, I'm pulling in from the next one, which means that the eight byte compare is looking all eight ahead. So what are the, what are the failure conditions here? What are the edge cases? I don't think we still need this mask logic. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, get the input, get the next input, potentially, if it exists. If it doesn't, shift in zeros. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, that's correct. We're going to shift in everything now, so those are going to be coming in from the correct things. We're then actually correctly comparing all positions if they have any matches in the next eight. Is it safe to not mask then? I think so. Right? I think it's safe now. In this condition, we would end up shifting in this B, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This B would get shifted over and we would see it. Well, this... Can we fuck up the situation? This A, we see this A, but isn't that okay? If we see that other A, if we see these two, this A, Oh, I think we still have the same issue, which makes sense. But I think it's maybe slightly alleviated. I think we still are going to have higher skip rates. So let's put this chunk thing in. And let's put the mask thing in. So we avoid the same 14 situation, which I think we still have. Let's do this. Okay, yeah, that really hurts our skip frequency.
Hmm. The only place this is wrong is this condition, correct? Because... Wait. I think I now have new info. Now I can tell you, based on the mask, I can just tell you where I know there's at least an 8-byte run. Right? So instead of doing this pre filtery thing, we can literally just... Use that. Right? Can I just shift in all 14, just call it a day? Do I just do that? Shift in is taking in data that's not actually adjacent. That's completely accurate. That is completely accurate. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um... Okay, let's just try this then. Um, let's just do it. Let's just do it the naive way. Let's do it the dumb naive way. Uh, page dot zero dot as pointer. Bytes.
minus eight. Hmm. Well, we know the page is actually 4,096, so let's just keep with that knowledge. Minus 16. No, we'll just do this. Page len minus uh, 8 bytes. Oh, in this case, it just doesn't matter. Current chunk is going to be... Um... Okay, we'll do this. Inf offset index dot uh steps sixty four. Next. Okay, this should uh, crash. Let's just comment out everything. This should crash. It might get fully optimized out, but we'll see. I-32. Oh, step by. Wow, steps? Weird. Okay. Yep, that got optimized out. So let's just do this. This has to crash, right? Good. Okay. Thank God. There we go. This should not crash. Okay. So now we can see roughly what our margins are. Beautiful. 755. Okay. That's not bad. 755, 757. Beautiful. And if we change this back, it will crash as it should. Because it will be like, no, it's bad. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Now they actually are in order. Right? Uh, not plus four, plus eight. And it goes out of bounds. It's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Going out of bounds is totally fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with going out of bounds. It just is for extra perf. It's just like Sterling does.
take a look see at the Intel manual. Okay. Um fine. There's a small out of bounds here. It's it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, chunk and next. Add that, add that, load that, load that. Now it's actually shifting in the next thing, eight sixteen twenty four thirty two. Do the comparisons. This is telling me where I have sequences of eight byte matches. Put in break. There we go. Beautiful. Here comes the datums. All right. Hmm. I feel like this isn't working for shit. Am I wrong? Is it me that's wrong? Am I the wrong one right now? Because this looks like this doesn't work for shit. I feel like I'm getting scammed by my own shit code. It's the compiler who's wrong. I agree. Oh, this is doing the opposite of what I want. Chat, get your poggers ready. Chat, get your poggers ready.
Is this how computers work? Ah, shit. Come on. Um, holding the foggers. Hmm. We're just going to skip the the last 64 bytes so it doesn't go out of bounds. Now it's safe. Kebab school? Thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. What were you up to? Oh, look at those bits. Look at those bits. A lot of datums. Okay, it's way more dat. I've got break in. Hello. I guess serial ports just be slow. Serial ports are just slow. I think. Hmm. Okay. I Made mean, a replay system. Oh, hell yeah. That's amazing. How long have you been working on that? Voxel FPS? First person shooter? Hell yeah. What engine are you using? Okay. So this is now telling me if the character... This is telling me if the character... At that bit position is duplicated in the next window of eight. Right? Right? Actually, I'm feeling some. Uh, uh, no, not that. Uh, So this is now telling me if that specific character repeats. So does 73 repeat uh, if it does not repeat? Okay. Does 73 repeat in here? No, it doesn't. Does 67 appear in here in the next eight? It does not. 
72 does. 72, 72, 72. So all of those are clear. After the 72s, we have a 77. Which goes to there. And that's unique. So this tells me where that individual byte is unique. Okay. Hmm. Does this logic make sense? They need to all be set. For there to be a unique set of eight in there. Hmm. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Eight. Eight, eight, eight. What does that prove? If that is all F. If it is all Fs, it means all eight of those characters are unique for a window from themselves to the next eight. Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Get it? Okay, so we're looking for Fs. Mask is not zero. I guess I can go the other way and I can just look for the equality, can I? Which is what I was doing before. The exact same shit I was doing before. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think it's cheaper to go this way. Because then I'm not masking shit down. This is going to panic. Okay, we go to the top. Now, we've inverted the logic, but we've done a cheaper logic here. Um, so basically, a bit is zero if that character does not repeat in the next eight in an eight-byte window. Okay, so if this is zeros, um,
I can't just look for 14 of these, can I? That's... That's not how it works, right? Heroes, that's... Me too. Um... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think this logic is correct. The bit will be zero if that character does not show up for... If it sees this anywhere, seven two sees itself. So that's set, which is bad. Seven two doesn't repeat. Six C doesn't repeat. Seven one does repeat. Seven one doesn't repeat. Six seven repeats. Seventy repeats. Seventy does not repeat anymore. Okay, I think this is the right bit stream. So can't I look for a sequence of fourteen bits in this? Like, can I look for a sequence of 14 bits? That doesn't mean that it's an exact match. That means that it could be a match. Because this is only scanning 8 ahead. But if I find 14, that means I find a window... Or is that not true? Is it where I find 7? Is it where I find seven zeros in a row? Or is it six? Might be six zeros in a row. Because if it scans eight bytes ahead, six plus eight is 14, right? So this is scanning eight bytes ahead, which means that if there are six clear bits, in a row. If there are six clear bits in a row, then that means I think that's correct. If there are six clear bits in a row, then that means that all six of those didn't see themselves within eight. Right? Six clear bits in a row means that they didn't see themselves for eight bits, eight bytes into the future. S technically seven, because we do seven comparisons, right? Is the OS open source? It is not. Uh, six bytes.
Okay. I can actually go one deeper. I can go to R8. Which is now 64. Which has now made it harder. I'm gonna get rid of comments because they're not accurate right now. That's not oob anymore. But well, we're not looping the correct amount, but that's okay. 64 will uh, shift in the entire thing. Oh, OS is open source, no operating system. Sorry. Okay, so now it's looking eight bytes ahead of itself, including itself. So this would mean, and this is valid, right? Because for the last one, it's just going to compare against the next eight. Six, seven, eight. Um, the real tilted tree. Thank you so much for the twenty-three months. Hell yeah. So now, since I'm doing eight inclusive, now I want to look for five zeros in a row, I think. Is that what it is? Five zeros in a row now? Um, eight, 16, 24, 32, 56, 64. 64 will shift that to zeros. That will become zero, so it won't shift that. That'll or it in. And that will be a complete comparison. And that will work for the last position. That will be checking all of them against eight bytes in the future. Okay. I'm really surprised how long these sequences can be. I think I can do better than this. I think I can do better than this. I can do better than this. Can I? Can I do better than this?
Hmm. Still solving Advent of Code? Yeah, still working on it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I feel like if I find a sequence of five, it could be a match. But it's impossible to have a match without a sequence of five. Let's see, is that true? Or is it a sequence of six? Is it a sequence of six? Or a sequence of five? Then it becomes an issue of searching for bit repetition. If that is the case. Uh. Eight, nine, eleven. Is it seven bits in a row? Oh, God. No, it's six bits in a row. Or can I look for eight bits in a row? I'm really starting to confuse myself now. That's no good. I don't like when I do that. Oh, uh, that's... Um, how many combos are there here? A lot. 11 bill, 11 bill for eight. Hmm. Um. I think it's just Six in a row. Nine, ten, eleven, fourteen. Six in a row. Six bits in a row. I think that's correct. I think it is impossible to have a match if there aren't six bits in a row. Yes, that is completely true.
All right. So how hard is it to search for six bits in a row? That's all I need to do. I need to search for six bits in a row. That's it. That's the solution. I need to look for six bits in a row on this new mask. Uh, is there a reason to scan further than this? Uh... They will always be able to see up to eight in front of them. Yes. Yes. Six bits in a row. Okay, so I have these bit strings now, and what I want to do is I want to look for sequence of sequences of six bits in a row. That's the new problem. Now we look for six zero bits in a row. How the fuck do I do that? Is there a way to do this? Anyone have ideas? Uh, okay, so can we simplify anything in here? Not really. Eight, 16, so we'll compare against eight with ourselves. So first is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Correct, correct. So this generate those, this generate these. We look eight bytes ahead, we compute the mass, we look for six zero bits in a row. Okay, we can turn these bit streams, we might need to do an outer loop now, actually. ETA Intel has FPGA extensions instead of AVX. The dream. Technically, AVX is just way better than FPGAs for many things. Um, hmm. So, let's see, like, this is an example here of six in a row. So the first one, there's the eight-byte window, and uh, that failed because the seven four is in there. The next one, six eight is not in there. Six three is not in here. Six two is not in here. Six seven is not in here. Seven four is not in here. And that's one, two, three, four, five. And we have one more. And in this window, there is not a six D. 
And this has correctly found that this is a candidate starting from there to there, and that should be 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Fuck. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, they're scanning 8 bytes ahead of them. So I want to highlight nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's the 70. Yep, that's all 14. So that is saying that if I find six in a row, it means that these six do not appear in a sub eight window from where they are. And that is going to be pretty fucking rare unless it's a candidate. In this case, it's not the actual match, and that's fine. But I think that's pretty good. So let's see how fast we can do this. Uh, it's really just mask here that we need. And we'll get rid of the break. Comma. Okay. And if we decrease this, then we look for a longer sequence. Which is an another option, is we can just look shallower, right? We can, like, look for this. So that's a 1.745, and this is now a... Let's see how much that hurts us. 1.89. Okay. Okay. Um, so what is the logic here? Well, let's, I guess, let's just look at a window. We'll probably want to look 8 bits at a time. We can look larger than that, but I think 8 bits at a time makes the most sense. So we have that. So I guess we have... We want to look for where can there be a match? Do I have conflict? Uh, oh, conflict that only does 32 bits. Nope, that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> what can we do here? Hmm. So let's say, worst case scenario is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and a one. Okay. And let's just do that. So that has six in a row, which is what we are requiring with this logic. All right, so if we just keep pushing those out, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
So these are all possible patterns of a six window. Um, okay, so what here do we need to detect? Oh, this is hard. Hmm. Hmm. Do I just shift it and or it? Um, what granularity do I want to do that on? Let's just do that in this case, for example. Um, or does mask shift one? Let's just say that. Uh, Ord, or equals Ord shift one. Six. Right? Uh, so we're basically dragging those bits back over itself. Now we're looking for single bits. That's good. That's good. I think that's good. I don't know. Talking on my ass. I have no idea what's good. Nice. So the top things, that's kind of fine. And is this correctly doing it six times? I think so. Let's print the original mask. And I'll panic at the end. When do you sleep? You've been sleeping for six... Uh, 13 hours? Uh, soon, hopefully. Hopefully soon. Okay, so what we should be able to do is we should be able to find a four gap, and that's all one. And we have a six gap here, and it's fucked. So, uh, that means that we need to do five ors, which makes sense. So I was looking for sevens. Okay, now this is correct. Um, okay, here's two zeros. Two zeros in a row means there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Um, and we should be able to five, find a five in a row. Yep, here's a five in a row. And in a five in a row, it's all ones. Another five in a row, all ones. The only place where we should be able to find a zero is a six in a row. So here's a perfect six in a row. Six in a row, and we have a zero. Okay, so that is now detectable. Right? That's now, like, pretty detectable, pretty cheaply.
Obviously, we have some shit going on up top, but there's really nothing we can do about that right now. Um, um, so we now have a zero and then most things are ones, which is great. Okay. Okay. And that zero is at the start of the sequence of six. Which is beautiful. That's exactly where I want it to be. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So, uh, I think we need to make more loopages. Um, we need to do, so these are 64 bits. We need to do eight of these at a time. Eight of these at a time. Okay. How does that sound? So we're going to do 64 times eight. Is that true, or am I lying? I might be lying. I might be lying. Um, 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 um. God damn it. Okay. Six. I really need to pull in bits from the next stream. Oh, God, and I don't have a good way of doing that. Is this VOD going to step? Yeah. I'll upload it to YouTube at some point. How can I help talk to a rubber ducket? I'm still trying to figure out like what... Where I want to continue optimizing it. I want to do this vectorize, right? I want to vectorize this search. Which means that I have to do eight of these. But the problem is these top bits is I, I, I don't know the data in the future. I guess I could overscan. Okay. Does this problem go away if I stride by 64 minus 8? Uh, this is going to crash. That's all right. Perfect.
I think this issue goes away now. Because I, I duplicate some work. I do this. I do this. I do this. And then I ignore the top eight. Right? And now we'll see repetition. Um... Like this, oh, what we should see is this at the bottom of this. One, oh, one, one, oh, one, one, one. Yes, we are intentionally over computing the last eight. Can I just do that for everything then? So these are all solid ones. Okay, so let's try this. If ORD is equal to not zero, continue. Beautiful. We've reduced it, honestly, a shit ton. Skips is zero. This is good. This is good. This is this is really good. This is really good. So our skips are really clean now. They're in the 40s. 44 skips. That is really good. So the top eight doesn't matter because we're gonna come back and do those the next round. By stepping by less than that. Uh, then we do this. Blah, blah, blah. Blam through all these. And then here, I can just do... Uh, what do I have access to? Um... All of these are candidates. All of the zeros are candidates. Let's just get rid of these. And this is the actual shit that I'm processing. I think this logic's out correctly. Any new plushies? Uh, not really. I've got a loaf of bread somewhere. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay. How expensive is this so far? Let's imagine uh, this is Ord. Okay. Gibbs isn't used, but that's totally fine. That will just get optimized out. But Ord, which is what we actually have to compute up to. And then, ooh, are we actually just not fast anymore? No, we're not. Why? Really? We in we in slow mode? Oh. <laughs> Guess that was a misclick. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh 
Um. Okay, what if I just do ma mass? Now we're in perf mode. Interesting. Is the continue? Is the continue hurting me? Or is it just all those unaligned axes? Might be the unaligned axes at this point. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, chat. I think it's time for sleep. I need to come up with more ideas of how to tackle this. There's like a bunch of different ways. Got to find the best way. I got to go to sleep. I'm tired. Have a good rest of your evening, day, morning, whatever it is. I'm just going to get some sleep. I am exhausted. All right. Night, everyone. Let's, uh, I'm going to keep thinking on this and hopefully we can come up with a, a good idea. All right. See you later.